Hello and welcome back to another Mr. Carter Science Special. This video will be covering the AQA specification B2.1, B13.2, cell division, mitosis and meiosis. So at the end of this first part of the video, you should be able to describe the role of chromosomes within cells, the importance of the cell cycle and how the cell divides by mitosis. Before we get to mitosis, it's very important that you understand certain terminology that goes along with the nucleus of a cell. The nucleus of every cell contains a very long molecule called DNA, and you can see the structure, that double helix structure of the DNA here. DNA is then condensed and coiled up with some proteins into a form known as a chromosome. And again, you can see that coiling here to show you the chromosome. A very short section of DNA is called a gene, and genes contain the coded information for making a protein. Some proteins are enzymes which control all the chemical reactions that happen in a cell. So in this way, the DNA will control the functions of the cell. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and the DNA and the proteins called histones will coil itself to form the chromosomes. All an organism's DNA is known as its genome. The genome is the complete set of genes or genetic materials DNA present in a cell or an organism. And that will be the same in every single nucleus of every single cell an organism has, because they will all contain identical copies of the DNA. A chromosome, as you can see here, is made up of DNA and they are groups of several hundreds or thousands of genes and they will always, always come in pairs. A gene is a short section of DNA or a short section of a particular chromosome. You can see that here with my red line and that carries the information to code for a protein and the gene is the basic unit of inheritance. Humans have 46 or 23 pairs of chromosomes in each cell, one pair from each parent. A cell which contains pairs of chromosomes are always described as being diploid. So in humans, almost all our cells are diploid. That means nerve cells, liver cells, skin cells, muscle cells, they are all diploid. There's only three exceptions of cells which are not diploid. One of them is a red blood cell, which is not diploid because it has no nucleus. And the other two are the gametes, the sperm and egg cells, and they only have half the normal number of chromosomes, just 23, no pairs. A cell which contains half the normal number of chromosomes, they are described as being haploid cells. Now here you can see something called a karyotype. A karyotype is, in effect, a photograph of all the chromosomes in a cell. They've been cut out and rearranged to show the pairs of the chromosomes. And again, you can see that there are 23 pairs. Pair number one is the tallest and the longest. And down here, pair number 23 is the smallest and the shortest. In fact, the 23rd pair are known as the sex chromosomes. And there's two forms, the X form and the Y form. If you have an X and a Y, then you are a male. If you have an X and an X, then you are female. So what exactly is mitosis? Well, mitosis is described as a division of a nucleus, which results in the production of two daughter cells, each with an identical set of chromosomes in the nucleus to the parent cell. And this will result in the formation of two genetically identical diploid body cells. So if you think about that, Diploid, or a short course of saying that is 2N, these are cells which have pairs of chromosomes in the nucleus, and in humans that would be 46 chromosomes in the nucleus. And at the end of mitosis, you would have two cells, each with 46 chromosomes, exactly identical to the chromosomes in the original parent cell. On this diagram, you can see something called the cell cycle. And that explains the different phases that a cell will go through in its lifetime. For the majority of a cell's life, it will find itself in the interphase. And this is the point of a cell's life when it is carrying out its normal function. For example, a muscle cell will contract and relax. Uh, a nerve cell, uh, a neuron will be sending electronic nerve impulses. 
but towards the end of the interface something really interesting happens about here the normal sort of um, i-shaped chromosome turns into an x-shaped chromosome so in effect the chromosomes replicate and double and hold this new x shape so instead of having 46 chromosomes in the nucleus now we have 92 chromosomes in the nucleus after that point the cell will begin to go through something known as mitosis and mitosis is split up into four phases the prophase the metaphase the anaphase and the telophase and what's happening in each of these phases is these 92 chromosomes are being separated and sent to opposite sides of the cell. And eventually, a nuclear, two nucleuses will form and each of those nucleuses will have 46 chromosomes because the original 92 has now been separated through the nuclear division known as mitosis. The last part of a cell's life is called cytokinesis and during cytokinesis the cell membrane itself will actually begin to split and all the different um, organelles of the cell the mitochondria um, the ribosomes for example will be shared equally between the two new cells that are formed now in the AQA specification it is not needed for you to understand exactly the movement of the chromosomes throughout mitosis. If you do want to know, I've included a little diagram of those down here. So just to summarise, during the interphase, the DNA, the chromosomes will replicate and double. During mitosis, the chromosomes are separated to different sides of the cell. And after mitosis, the cell will split into two, and this is called cytokinesis. Here you can see the original shape of the chromosome, and then its new X shape after the chromosomes have duplicated at the end of the interphase. So what we're trying to do in mitosis is to take one cell here, which is diploid, and we would call that 2N for short because it has pairs of chromosomes. And we're trying to take that one diploid cell and turn it into two cells that are both diploid. So they will be 2N because they've got pairs of chromosomes in their nucleuses. And these cells will be identical to each other and to the original parent cell because they've got identical copies of the chromosomes and the DNA. So let's just have a little think about that. We can see that clearly in our diagram here. We've got in the original cell four chromosomes or in fact two pairs of chromosomes. They then during the end of the interphase will replicate so we end up with eight chromosomes or four pairs of chromosomes that cell will then go through mitosis to form two identical daughter cells each with four chromosomes or two pairs by the end so just pause the video at this point have a think about everything you've learned so far and copy down this gap fill here to see what you have learned and whether you can fill in the keywords that are missing And here are the answers. At the end of a cell's life, it will prepare to reproduce by mitosis. Mitosis is an example of asexual reproduction. In eukaryotic cells, mitosis is a process where one diploid 2N cell produces two diploid 2N daughter cells. To do this, the DNA, DNA must replicate during the interphase. Mitosis is important in growth as it produces new cells. Mitosis also replaces cells that have died. For example, mitosis replaces old skin cells that have died due to normal wear and tear and UV radiation. If you take a sample of tissue that's growing where the cells are actively going through mitosis and you stain those cells and look at them under a microscope, you can actually see the different stages of mitosis as the chromosomes begin to move and get separated across the cell. 
For example, here at the bottom, you can see the prophase where the chromosomes are actually condensing. So we can see individual chromosomes down the microscope as opposed to the more normal, dark, dense nucleus that you're used to seeing. Here in the metaphase, you can see all those chromosomes have lined up in the center of the cell. And in the anaphase, you can see the chromosomes being pulled to opposite sides of the cell where they're finally being separated. And then you can see the telophase here where we have one very large cell membrane um, with two nucleuses contained within that cell. And that cell will eventually go through the final step of cytokinesis to create two new identical cells from mitosis. But what about the opposite process, meiosis? How is it that you can produce and form gamete cells which contain half the normal number of chromosomes and are in fact haploid? Well, this is a very similar process to mitosis. And during meiosis, each chromosome will replicate and make a copy of itself towards the end of a cell's life in the interphase. And the chromosome will now have that traditional X shape. But this is where it begins to change a little bit because the pairs of chromosomes will pair up and form homologous chromosomes in the first phase of mitosis. So instead of having a line of chromosomes, you end up with pairs of chromosomes. You can see them together here. In this case, our four chromosomes are forming two homologous pairs where they're lined up next to each other. Occasionally at this point, you can get something called crossing over, which I will come back to, where a little section of each chromosome can break off and they can rejoin with their opposite pair. Once we've got these homologous chromosomes, they then begin to be separated to the opposite sides of the cells so that we then end up with two cells, each with half the number of chromosomes, and possibly a mixing of maternal and paternal chromosomes, creating more variation. The X-shaped chromosomes, though, we haven't separated those yet. And the X-shaped chromosomes then need to be separated and pulled apart, so four cells are made, each containing half the normal number of chromosomes. So we end up with four cells, which are going to be haploid cells so not 2n but n with half the normal number of chromosomes so we begun with a 2n diploid cell and the chromosomes got separated and separated again to form four cells with half the normal number of chromosomes four haploid cells so we can clearly see here we have a number of differences between mitosis and meiosis. Both start with one parental cell, which is diploid, 2n. In mitosis, so we only produce two daughter cells, which are identical to the parent cell, and both diploid. However, in meiosis, we end up making four daughter cells, which are haploid. Well, N is the other way we can say that. And they are not identical to the parent cell. There's an awful lot of variation in meiosis, and that's a very good thing. So just pause the video now and see whether you can complete and fill in these gaps to see what you've learnt and whether you can compare mitosis to meiosis. So mitosis, at the end of a cell's life, it will prepare to reproduce by mitosis, and mitosis is an example of asexual reproduction. In eukaryotic cells, mitosis is a process where one diploid cell produces two identical diploid daughter cells. And to do this, the DNA replicates during the interphase. Meiosis, on the other hand, um, with meiosis, gamete cells like sperm and eggs and pollen and ovules are produced by meiosis. And normal body cells are diploid and contain pairs of chromosomes, but the gametes are haploid and contain half the normal number of chromosomes. In eukaryotic cells, meiosis is the process where one 2N diploid cell produces four haploid daughter cells. During fertilization, 
the two haploid end cells can fuse together to form a single diploid cell called a zygote and that's how life will start again with our diploid cells now i did mention that variation is incredibly important with meiosis and a large amount of genetic variation is important to allow a species to adapt and evolve in a changing environment for example a new pathogen will not kill off all the members of a species as some will be immune due to a natural genetic variation so where can we get this genetic variation from well genetic variation can be caused by a change in the nucleotide base sequence of a gene or an allele uh, for example, a substitution or a subtraction or an addition, and this is called a mutation. So natural mutations will create new genes, new genetic variation, which will be passed on. Or we can get genetic variation occurring during meiosis by what's known as independent assortment or random assortment, because we don't know which one of your parents' chromosomes are going to end up in the individual sperm or egg cell that's created. We don't know whether you're gonna get 100% of your father's chromosomes and then 100% of your mother's chromosomes going into the separate cells, or whether you're gonna get a mixture of them and that complete random mixture creates some variation. And also, as I mentioned earlier, you get crossing over or recombination. When those um, chromosomes line up in their homologous pairs, occasionally there's a little bit of an overlap and sometimes you get a break so a section of one chromosome can join with a different chromosome and they swap over different sections again creating variation a chromosome with a mixture of genes there so let's try comparing meiosis and mitosis pause the video at this point copy down this table see what have you learned can you answer the questions here where does meiosis and mitosis occur what type of cells are produced how many cell divisions take place how many new cells are produced how many sets of chromosomes do the new cells have and what is the definition of the two processes and here are the answers Mitosis occurs in all body cells and all organs. All organs are going to have cells that are going to be worn out and need to be replacing, so they'll all have a region where mitosis occurs. But meiosis will only occur in the gonads, that's the ovaries and the testes in humans, or in plants we'd be looking at the ovaries and the anthers. What types of cells are produced? Well, we're producing mainly body cells for mitosis, apart from red blood cells which do not have a nucleus. And in meiosis, we'd be producing gamete cells, sperm and egg cells in humans or pollen and ovules in plants. How many divisions take place? Well, for mitosis, we have just one single division which takes place and produces two cells. Whereas in meiosis, we have two divisions where one cell will divide into two, which then each divide into two cells from self so we end up producing four cells in meiosis how many sets of chromosomes do the new cells have they will have 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes in total and those cells will be diploid from mitosis whereas in meiosis the cells which are produced will only have 23 chromosomes in total no pairs and will therefore be haploid and what's the definition well the definition of mitosis is one cell that can produce two identical daughter cells both of which would be diploid and for meiosis the definition is one diploid cell producing four non-identical haploid daughter cells Thank you very much for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed it please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to look out for new videos as they come along and please comment in the comments below this video let me know what you enjoyed about the video let me know what you've learned thank you very much for your time